Okay, so we're going to start off with putting the platform together, which will be attaching the beams to the hulls. We've laid the hulls out the right way round and approximately in the right place. So these parts on the hulls are called the pylons. These parts on the beams are called the castings. Okay, so we're making sure that first of all, the pylons are clean and also the castings are clean as well. And then we're just gonna take some regular grease and we're just gonna put a light coating of grease onto the pylons there. And we're gonna do that to all of the pylons making sure we've just got a light coating of grease all the way round and that will stop the boat from sticking together. Okay, so we're just going to slip the first one on with the hull on its side. And there we go. So we're just slipping that on loosely and then we're using the beam to get some leverage to pull the hull upright. And then we can see if the other hull, if we've got it in roughly the right position. So this one's a bit too far forward, so I'm just gonna slide it back. This is another tip here is, it's a good idea to do this on some grass if you can, because uh, it means you can move the boats around without worrying about scratching the hulls. Okay, so that's given us our initial start of the platform. Next thing we're gonna do is just offer up the sidebars. So to find out which way round the sidebars are going to go, two things we can look at. Firstly, with the rubber, the rubber will probably come more over on the top. So we could see on this side, it's coming over, just leaving this much metal exposed. And on the bottom, there's all this metal exposed, meaning this is the top. And then we can see here is the opening for the trampoline. Traditionally, this would go at the front, but here at Wildwind, we're gonna put this at the back. We can then just slot them in to the casting on the rear beam. Okay, so this is the bit which is definitely the most tricky to do if you are on your own because we need to slot the front beam onto the pylons and onto the sidebars at the same time. We'll slot the sidebar in. Just be aware that that will fall out at the back if you're not careful. And then we'll just push the hull until it's in the right spot. And we'll just get just the top of that casting over the pylon. Okay, so we had it just loosely over the pylon to get that one in position. So now we're just gonna lift that up, pull it forwards a little bit so that we can get the sidebar located. And then again, we're just gonna have to pull the bow outwards a little bit. This is the sort of thing that can happen. If you've got a brand new boat or you've just painted it, maybe put a piece of carpet or something or cardboard on top of the hull to make sure that she doesn't get scratched and there we are she's on okay so once we've got that saddled we need to get this down um, if it's been built before there will be a bit of a line where it came to but we're trying to line the holes up so oh. then we'll be able to put the bolts through which will hold it all together so to get it in position we're going to use basically the biggest rubber hammer that you can wield. Um, if you don't have a rubber hammer and all you've got is a metal one, then if you put a piece of wood on top and then hit the wood, it's not quite as good, but it will still do the job without damaging the casting. And then we're just gonna hit this until, until those holes are lining up. And then we're just gonna check, have a look at the hole. Looks good. So once you've got it lined up, you can then insert the bolt. 
This might take a little bit of fine adjustment, just tapping it up and down to get it through. And sometimes it is difficult to get the casting down on the pylon. So don't be afraid to give it a really good hit. She can take it, hit it as hard as you can if you need to. Do just make sure everything is on the right way round before you start hitting it. And then once that's through, we should just have a plastic nut, which just gets screwed on, finger tight. And that's worth checking every time you go out sailing. Okay, so there we go. We've got all of those pylons and castings lined up nicely. All the bolts are in. That is stage one complete. So we've got a fresh trampoline straight out of the OS3 sail loft and we're going to put that on. We're going to start off by fitting the trampoline into the sidebars. So if the entrance on the sidebars is at the front, then you're going to feed it in from the front. But because ours is at the back, we're going to feed it in from the back, making sure that the pocket is going to be towards the front and the toe strap is on the top. Sounds obvious. And then we'll feed that in. If it's tight to get it in, you can get the, the bolt ropes in the trampoline wet first, give them a good rinse, and it will go in a lot easier. Okay, so once that's in and we've got it all the way to the front or the back, depending on which way you're going, we can then feed it into the front beam. Very straightforward. Okay, lovely. And then we'll just repeat that for the other side. We've got the two main pieces in. We're just gonna put the lacing strip for the back into position. For which way up to go, with the Kringles, there's a top and a bottom. So you just want the smooth part on the top. And then once we've got the lacing strip in, we just want to make sure that it's right in the middle. I'm just lining up these Kringles at the end to make sure it is right in the middle. There we go. The trampoline lacing, we're using a, a four millimeter rope. Pretty much any four millimeter rope will do it. And this is seven meters for the middle and then four meters for each of the back pieces. And then we're gonna start off just by tying it on with a bowline. And then we're just gonna lace it up first without pulling any tension on, on the middle part. So we'll go to the end and we're just gonna make sure we keep lacing it the same way. So we're going round and round. With our trampolines here, we have an extra hole fitted just in the front corner. And what we do with that is we just tie a line around the beam, which holds it even tighter, which we like. But you probably won't have this hole on your trampoline, so don't worry about that too much. And then for the back trampoline lacing, it's actually gonna start through this hole on the casting where she's gonna come through. We're then gonna tie a figure of eight knot in the end of there so it doesn't pull through. And then we've already gone to the first hole. And then from there, we're actually gonna go around the beam so that the pull is 
not coming too far over and so that we can make use of this second eyelet in the trampoline. Just pulling a bit of tension on as we go. And then like we did with the middle, we're just gonna go round and round. We're gonna be careful not to pull the lacing strip over to the side, which will happen a bit naturally. I'm just holding a little bit of tension on here, but we're not tensioning it up as we go. But you can do, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. So whatever it is that works for you, that is the right way to do it. We're just checking several times as we lace it up with a little bit of tension on, just that the lacing strip isn't coming off centre. Okay, so we're pretty much there. I'm just going to finish that off just for now by tying a loose two half hitches in there. And then of course we're going to repeat that on the other side. The other method we can use is to tighten as we go. So I'll put a foot on the back beam, pull some tension on. This means that you have the the whole of the rope to grab which you can find easier but everybody has a way that they like to do this so everybody's different of course and then we're just gonna grab it there to hold the tension on and then we're just gonna continue round and round until we've done the whole thing Okay, so we've tensioned that one up as we've gone, and then we're just gonna finish it off by going diagonally across here, coming back to that hole, and that's just gonna pull a bit more tension on there to finish, and then we're just gonna tie it off with a few half hitches. Very nice. Okay, so with the other side, we're going to use a different technique. We're going to use this for pulling and then the pliers just to stop it from going back. This is an easier technique if you've got two people who can do this. One person can do the pulling. We're using a screwdriver here just to save your hands a little bit. And then when you've pulled it, the other person can come in and nip it while you get the next loop and then we're going to pull it and nip it and that nipping just stops the rope from going back outwards we're going to pull it and nip it and continuing all the way along so on the 16 tightening the middle the person tightening it is going to have to go underneath the boat to get the purchase and then if you have got two people the second person can be on the top as the nipper to stop it from going through one thing that is very important when you're tightening a trampoline is that you don't put any weight on the trampoline while you're tightening it because that will stop you from getting it as tight and then one trick we can use with a 16 or a 14 to get your trampoline a bit tighter is we can use the main sheet blocks and then we've tied the capsized writing line on here and we're gonna pass that around the beams halfway. If you've got nice new rubber on your beams then worth putting some carpet or some cardboard on there to make sure you're not gonna chew into the rubber. So that's gonna go underneath and we're gonna take it to the other side like this and then we're going to hook it or tie it to the main sheet at the top and we can then sheet in there a bit and what that's going to do 
is bend the sidebars inwards just a little bit and that's going to take the strain off the trampoline as we tighten it. Just a few small points, uh, if you've, especially if you have an older boat, just do pay attention to the kringles when you're pulling the rope, but it doesn't look like they're pulling away from the cloth. If they, are, if they start pulling away from the cloth, just back off a little bit to make sure you don't pull the kringle out. And not all boats will have the same gap in between the pieces. So you, the gap on your boat, the trampoline pieces might be much wider apart, but that's not a problem. Okay, so then my position under the boat for tightening the trampoline is I'm making sure I'm the right way around. I can put my feet on the hulls and then I'll use the same tool to get in there. And then if I haven't got the friend on top, gripping it, I'm just going to pull it through, nip it with my fingers, or you could use pliers there, but I find the fingers do a good enough job, pull it through, and then we'll just work our way down. Certainly not my favourite job, but it is necessary. And then occasionally, when we have too much rope, so you can't really get a good grip on it, we can just pull it through all the way and then continue as we were. Okay, and then if having tied that off, if you are left with a significant amount of rope, especially if you've got a gap up the middle, you can then just go up through the holes, but go up the opposite way and that will make a bit of a net in the middle, less likely to lose your ropes through the middle of the trampoline. When that's all done, we can then release and take off the main sheet, allowing the sidebars to bend outwards again. And that will um, help to give us that tighter trampoline which we spoke about before. So the ideal thing is to service your rudders as you put them on, but if you're putting them on and off a lot, or if you haven't got the time or the facilities to service them, then we'll just put them straight on. So we're gonna take the rudder stock, we've got the rudder pin, and we're just gonna line that up. Of course, if you've got a slightly older boat, you're system might be slightly different and then we're just going to insert the pin from the top and then if it is a little bit tight sometimes giving it a wiggle like this is going to help you to get it in um, and then it's in very important is that we put a split ring into the bottom of that rudder pin to make sure that the rudder doesn't fall off when we're upside down. There we go. Um, if it's really tight to get the rudder pin in, then you can give it a tap with a hammer, but just make sure it is lined up correctly. And if you are tapping the rudder pin, try to tap it with something like this so we're not directly tapping the end of the rudder pin because that will flatten off the end of the pin making it uh, a bit wider and so it won't go in as nicely the next time but once the rudder's on then we can put it in the up position there we are that one's done so once the rudders are on we're going to fit the tiller connecting bar um, most tiller connecting bars will have a label to say which way it is they go on but generally speaking the side with the adjustment will always be on the port side the left side of the boat um, there's two different systems this is the more modern system where it just slots on or you might have a system where it bolts together both systems are equally good but this system is just very handy because it's quick. 
Okay, so what we're doing is we're just popping it on. Very straightforward indeed. And then we've got a clip and the clip just goes on on the top there. If it's difficult to get the clip on, you can just bend it into the right position. If you have got the system which uses the nut and bolt, then you just want to tighten it up so that it takes out most of the forwards backwards play, but you can still quite easily uh, move the rudders from side to side. And then once that's done, we could just put the tiller extension on. And again, we're gonna put the split ring in there to hold that pin in place. And there we go, that's all done. Got the mast pulled most of the way up. Um, and first thing is to attach the rigging. Of course, if you need to know how to put the rigging onto the mast, do check out the how to rig the mast video. But I'm just gonna take the shroud, taking the shroud, from this side, so we've got the two trapeze wires and then the shroud is next. Just working our way down the boat with the shroud, making sure that it's not twisted around anything. And then we get to the end. We've got the wire coming down onto the chain plate and then we've got a twisty piece and this will go on to the shroud anchor pin. It is worth taking your pliers or maybe an adjustable spanner and just giving that a little tweak just to check that that is screwed into the hole nicely. And then we can attach this part on here. Of course, depending on the age of your boat and where your boat is from, the rigging might be slightly different. And then what's a good idea is if you have got the shroud covers on there, is just to take the cover down over the first part and that will just stop that from bending when you put the mast up. We'll then of course repeat that for the other side. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm taking the shroud from the right spot. And you'll notice I've left the, um, the trapeze wires are still tied up. This means that they're not gonna be in a mess when we put the mast up. So we're just taking the bridle straight from the hull, making sure that it's not twisted or anything. Okay, so onto the bridle wires. We're gonna have the two wires going onto that shackle there. A little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Okay, and then we're just gonna tighten that shackle up using the pliers to make sure that that bad boy isn't going to come undone. Okay, and then into the mast step, we're gonna put a mast pivot bearing uh, like this, which is just a piece of plastic, quite thick, cut to the right size. You can, of course, cut your own piece of plastic, but the ones from Hobie are actually made out of a special plastic that lasts a bit longer. Here at Wild Wind, where the boats are being used every day, we have to replace these about once every month is about right, but in the real world, perhaps, just worth checking every time you put your mast up and there it is so that's ready the one last thing we'll do before we go for the hoist is just to check that the forestay is going to be ready to be attached so we'll just take that from the top of the mast just making sure that that's going to come to the right spot so for the raising of the mast, I'm gonna recruit the help of uh, Marco here. And um, if you are having to put the mast up on your own, do check out the using the mast hinge video that you can see just here. And that will show you how you can do this single-handed. Okay, so Marco's role is gonna be on the mast foot, making sure that that doesn't jump out. And then once the mast's up, Marco will then connect the forestay. I'm gonna go and grab the end of the mast and raise it up. So on the 16, the mast goes up straight, unlike other boats where the mast goes round to 90 degrees. 
just making sure that the rigging isn't caught around anything as we go up. Just gonna pop that on there. Onto the knees first. And then there we go. So of course, if you've got a third person that you can use, they could be lifting the mast slightly at the back so that then you can just lift the mast up from on the trampoline without having to climb up there while you're lifting the mast. And then Marco's just popping the four stay onto the end of those chain plates. And then with the mast up, it's going to be loose, which can be a little bit alarming at first, but that's just how we're leaving the mast on the 16 once it's up. So it will go back a little bit. And there we are, thank you Marco. Now that the mast's up, the next job is to attach the trapeze wires without getting into a tangled mess, which is possible. So I've got the two trapeze wires from the port side here. Just gonna make sure they're not twisted. And then these ones have got the shock cord on from before. So I'm just gonna let that one hang out the back a little bit. And then the way that I like to do the trapezes is the front one, the cruise one, goes through the eye in the trampoline. And then from there, I put a slightly longer piece of elastic on there so that there's enough for it to go around the center of the dolphin striker and that gives that elastic a bit more stretch. So that'll go around there. And then through the same hole on the other side. And then there are of course many ways that we could tie this on, but what I like to do, this is extra security, is just put a thumb knot in the end of the trapeze rope and then we can take the elastic. This has also got a knot in the end. And then we're just gonna put one hitch in there. So it's a very simple way of attaching it. But what that means is this, if the trapeze adjuster slips, it's not actually gonna be able to go off the end of the rope, meaning you're not gonna end up in the water. From the rope, we take the elastic and that's just gonna go under the trampoline which we can take around the back there, it's a bit easier. And then we're gonna tie that on using the same method. Then the rope for the jib traveler, we're just gonna make sure it's going underneath everything else. And then the way that I like to attach these is we'll just go through the front hole on the trampoline, around the beam, back down, and then a figure of eight in the end. And that makes it very tidy. And it means that you can get hold of the jib traveler rope while you're on the trapeze, which might be handy. Of course, you might not have these ropes on your boat, which means you don't have to worry about it. So once all that's done, just for a bit of extra security and peace of mind, we're just gonna put some tape on all of the split rings. And before we tape them, we'll just make sure that they're sitting the right way so that the cover can go over easily. And then we're gonna use electrical tape. And we're just gonna stretch it as we put it on. If you're in a hot country, there's uh, just tape it before you go out, but not um, if you're not going to go out because the glue in the tape can melt um, meaning the tape just falls off and it doesn't do anything but this is going to give you the peace of mind that those split rings are definitely staying in once you've got all the tape on 
We're going to tape up the other side, of course, and the four stay adjuster. Okay, so we're just sliding the cover over like that. And then a finishing touch here is we're just going to take a piece of VHS videotape, um, one for each bridle wire, and we're just going to tie that on approximately halfway down using a clove hitch. Pulling that tight, and there we go. And that is the best wind indicator that you can get. So the boat's ready. All that's left to do before we can go sailing is attach the main sheet and traveler, put the sails up, but most importantly, we're gonna put the bungs in. First thing you do when you go to prepare the boat for sailing, put the bungs in. There is nothing worse than forgetting your bungs. Okay, and then we're gonna attach the main sheet and the traveler. So if you've got this style of traveler car, we can just pin that straight on. If you've got the plastic traveler car, then you'll have to shackle it on to the bottom block. The bottom block is the one with the cleat. Systems do of course vary depending on the age of your boat and where your boat has come from. But this is the European, fairly modern, well, standard as it is now system. And we're just gonna pin that on there. Okay, and then from the end of the main sheet, we're just gonna work our way along, making sure it's not twisted or anything. There's a few twists in there. Now we have got a knot in here. The purpose of this knot is to stop the traveler from going out too far. So we take the end of that rope through the cleat. There's a little fair lead behind the cleat there. Then through the middle of the traveler car, pulling it through and then through the eye on the back. And then we're just gonna tie that off using a figure of eight knot. Easy. First thing before you even think about rigging the boat is make sure that the boat is pointing pretty much straight into the wind before you start thinking about putting the sails up. If the boat isn't pointing into the wind, it's gonna be very difficult to hoist the mainsail especially. And then once the mainsail's up, it could power up causing issues on the beach. Okay, it's down to personal preference if you prefer to hoist the jib or the mainsail first. I prefer to put the mainsail up first because it means the jib isn't hitting you in the back of the head while you're putting the main up. Um, if you've got a water source available, then a good idea is just to give the sail a quick rinse, focusing on the bolt rope, the front edge, which is going to go into the mast because it makes the sail go up a lot easier if your bolt rope is wet. Also, if you sail in salt water, this is a good opportunity to wash your sails, even if it's before you go sailing, because washing the sails when you come in from sailing might not be practical because uh, you might be wanting to put them away afterwards. You don't want to be putting away wet sails. So we've got the bolt rope really wet there. So now you can see how we've got the sail laid on the boat. Just a, a small amount of overlap here over the front beam and we've got the sail unrolled and we'll go for the head of the sail and we're going to attach that onto the main halyard, onto the shackle.
The main halyard on a 16 rolls over the top of the mast. Uh, this is a very good system as it makes it possible to both hoist the sail and feed it into the mast if you are single-handed. But like with everything, if you've got somebody who can give you a hand, it's worth having a hand. So what we're gonna do is with one hand, we're gonna feed the, mark, the sail into the mast track, making sure that the battens don't get caught on the trapeze wires or the rigging as it goes up. If it catches, we'll just pull it down a little bit and feed it in a bit better. Okay, at this point, we have our reefing points and where our reefing points are on the halyard, there's a second locking lug, uh, which means you might have to pull the halyard from a bit further forward just to get past that reefing point there. Okay. If it is very sticky to get the sail in, then what you can do, this is much easier if you have got two people, but um, if it's really hard, you can just stand on the dolphin striker or on the front beam, take a hand either side and actually push the sail up the mast and then just take up the slack on the halyard. Okay, so this last bit, generally a little bit sticky, but that's all the way in. Then to lock the sail up, we're just gonna take the halyard from a bit further forwards to get the lug past the locking point. And then it's definitely at the top. Now we're just gonna walk the halyard into the mast, making sure that the halyard is really in the middle of the mast there. And then we can pull the sail down and then it's quite clear to see but that is locked in. So the way that the halyard is working at the top of the mast is it rolls around the top. This is the front and then we've got this fork on the front of the mast. And then on the wire, there's a lug like this, which goes beyond the fork, sits underneath it. And that is what holds the sail up. To get the sail out, we're just gonna pull the halyard down slightly and then forwards which will take that lug out of the fork so the sail can go down. Now with this loose bit of halyard, we're actually gonna take this behind the trapeze wires and the shroud. And by doing that, it just makes it a little bit less likely to get caught on the jib battens. And then we're just going to cleat it off on this cleat on the side of the mast. Very nice. Coiling up the excess. And then that's going to go in the trampoline pocket. With your trampoline pockets, use one of the pockets for your halyards and the other one for the capsized writing line. Okay, there's several different downhaul systems that you might have but this is the most up-to-date system from Hobie Europe where we have a six to one. We're gonna start off by introducing the gooseneck slider into the mast. If it's really tight to get that in, just loosen off the outhaul on the boom and then that should go in easily. Okay, once that's in, we're just gonna take the downhaul rope which starts at the bottom block which has got the cleat and the blocks are gonna end up perpendicular to each other like this. So we're gonna to go to the middle first and then from front to back, following the natural line that the rope wants to go. Then we're gonna to come to the back coming through and then from back to front on this next one and then 
on the last one there's only one place where we can go and then that will bring it into the middle to come through the cleat the six to one downhill system is a very much a worthwhile upgrade to your boat if you haven't got one okay so lastly we're going to put the jib up when we're putting the jib up it's always a good idea to start off by putting on the tack of the jib first the front bottom corner and we're going to attach that in the third hole on the chain plate at the front there there we are so having done that we can then unroll the sail and we're going to attach the head of the jib to the halyard Okay, once that's on, on a 16 jib, you just have one hank near to the top, which clips onto the forestay. So we'll attach him on there. And now that that's on, we can hoist the sail. Now you might have a jib halyard system like this, where it comes down through a block and then back up, or it might just be a straight pull no difference at all really in how that's working apart from the amount of effort that it takes to get the jib up now the jib's at the top but on a 16 all of the rig tension goes on the jib so at the moment the rig is really loose and floppy so we're going to use the old sweating the halyard trick to get the rig tension on by pulling the halyard from here. We can see the mast goes forwards. And then in light winds, we're gonna pull this tight. And then in strong winds, not quite as tight. Okay. And there it is. On this system, we've got two cleats, but if you've got the other system, then you'll just cleat it off on the horn cleat there. Okay, and as I said, the halyards, main and jib, are going to go in the same pocket. So if we do have to use the writing line, we don't pull the halyards out at the same time. There we go. Okay, which just leaves the jib sheets, and then we're ready to roll making sure that they're not twisted at all. We've got five choices of where to put the jib sheets. What well, the only two choices we're interested in is we're going to use the middle hole for light or moderate winds and then one hole down for stronger winds. So we're going in the middle for now. Okay, it is worth uh, tightening that shackle with a shackle key or a pair of pliers just to make sure that you don't lose it. One other tip with the jib is always hoist and lower the jib on land if you can, because doing it on the water is very difficult. And then all that we need to do when we put the boat in the water is attach the main sheet, rudders down, downhaul on and then we're off with the main sheet to pull it out if you pull the middle rope from the back that makes it a lot easier to pull it out and then it's well worth investing in one of these snap shackles do see the link in the description below for a snap shackle because it's really fast and easy then 
just to put the main sheet onto the boom. So we're putting that on last so that it's impossible for the boat to power up on the beach and perhaps capsize or just get out of control. So there we go. And then when we want to take that off, we just pull it and she's off. So there we go. We're ready to go sailing now. Um, I hope that has been useful and informative for you from the boat in pieces to rigged and ready to go. There we are. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. If you're not yet subscribed to Joyrider TV, then please hit that subscribe button as well. There's a full list of all of the instructional videos on Joyrider TV in the description below. So other than that, thanks very much for watching. There'll be more coming up soon on Joyrider TV for all of your catamaran sailing needs. Thank you.